Today we will read from Chronicles 2nd and chapter 33. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He rebuilt the high places his father Ezekiah was demolished. He also erected altars to the Baals and made Asherah poles. He bowed down to all the starry hosts and worshipped them. He built altars in the temple of the Lord of which the Lord had said, My name will remain in Jerusalem forever. In both courts of the temple of the Lord he built altars to, the, to all the starry hosts. He sacrificed his sons in the fire in the valley of Ben Hinnon, practiced sorcery, divination, and witchcraft, and consulted mediums and spirits. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, provoking him to anger. He took the carved image. He had made and put it in God's temple, of which God had said to David and to his son Solomon, In this temple in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will not again make the feet of the Israelites leaving the land. I assign to your forefathers, if only, they will careful do everything I command in them concerning all the laws, decrees, and ordinances given through Moses. But Manasseh led Judah and the people of Jerusalem astray so that they did more evil the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. So the Lord brought against them the army commanders of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh prisoner, put a hook in his nose, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. In his distress, he sought the favor of the Lord his God and humble himself greatly before the God of his fathers. And when he prayed to him, the Lord was moved by his entreaty and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. Afterward, he rebuilt the outer wall of the city of David, west of the Gihon Spring in the valley, as far as the entrance of the Feast Gate, and encircling the hill of Ophir. He also made it much higher. He sta stationed military commanders in all the 45 cities in Judah. He got rid of the foreign gods and removed the image from the temple of the Lord, as well as the altars he had built on the temple hill in Jerusalem, and he threw them out of the city. Then he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed fellowship offerings and thank offering on it, and told Judah to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. The people, however, continued to sacrifice at the high places, but only to the Lord their God. The other events of Manasseh's reign, including his prayers to his God and the words the seer spoke to him in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, are written in the annals of the kings of Israel. His prayer and how God was, re was moved by his entreaty 
as well as all his sins and unfaithfulness and the sites where he built high places and set up Assyria poles and idols before he humbled himself. All are written in the records of the seers. Manasik rested with his fathers and was buried in his place. And Amor, his son, succeeded him as king. Amen. Manasi, an absolute and special person, who his acts are written for our teaching, a person through God give us a specific teaching, a unique teaching. Manasih means the one who forgets, the man who knows but forgets. But it is good to see the epistle the epistle of James the God says to execute the word of God and known only listeners. The man who comes and listen to the word of God but do not execute the word of God. He's in a bad place. Treating like a criminal. And the God gave us a mirror to look ourselves and check the condition we are. And this is the word of God. We execute precisely the word of God. And uh, the most important thing in our life, my brethren, is to listen to the Word of God, but mainly insist in uh, the reading of the Word of God. And everybody will see the results in our life. And this is what we have to do, to study, to study the Word of God, to pray so God will open His heart and pay attention to what He is reading and the Lord open His mind to understand what He is reading and to have a decision of death to execute the Word of God and the work of God and not to forget and He will be the blessed one that will execute the Word of God. Manasik, a very special person, a long-lasting king of Israel. He was a king for 55 years and he became a king at the age of 12 years old. His father, Ezekiah, was a chosen 
king, a very special person who did exactly as per God's commandments and God was always with him. And what Ezekiel was saying and asking from God that God was doing and God was blessing him despite having some big trials and accurate the king of Syria who turned against the people of Israel and Ezekiel having not power but having faith he went to the Lord and asked the Lord for help and uh, he have received a threatened letter and he read that letter to the God but there was no any solution Sennacherim was very powerful king there was no a hope for Ezekiel and people of Israel but his hope was the Lord this was his hope not his power nor the people but the Lord and the question is can the Lord do something what he can do and you know it's very easy for the God to act and give a triumph to his people and we are winners through the Lord Christ always but we should keep the Word of God and Sennacherim was very powerful but within a night the God sent an angel and killed many thousands of Assyrians a help to Ezekiel and people of Israel who could ever imagine and who could wait that an angel sent by God would kill one 185,000 Assyrians and set free the people of Israel and he left and killed by Assyrians Sennacherim but another trial is coming for Ezekiel and uh, Isaiah is coming and he says Ezekiel pray because it's time for you to die you are dying and it did a fatal a disease came to him and he was ready to die and Isaiah said to him that I was informed by God that you will die but Ezekiel has a good secret his hope is on God's mercy because the God is merciful he's good and he said that the angel who was sent to set me free from Sennacherim the one who sent him cannot do something for my life and uh, he was Isaiah was asked by the king to pray to God but because God is merciful when the man is crying out to the God 
the guy is listening to him. And Isaiah approached him and told him that you will be healed. And then he asked for a sign. And he received a s an incredible sign. And he said that I want the sun to come down 10 degrees less than the normal position. And this is what happened. And uh, the God listened to our prayers. But we should not be observators. But execute the word of God. And this is what happened to him. And now the God takes away his presence and gives a trial to him and see if he's following and praying to God. And we have the, the Haldians who visited the Zechia who was healed and uh, he was very proud of himself, saying that I was healed from the God. So he didn't glorify the God, but he glorified himself. And he take the senders of Babylonians and showing to them his property, his fortune, but for his glory, the Ezekiah king and what is the result Isaiah asked him who are they They're, and he replied they are Babylonians but Isaiah told him you made a mistake because we as human beings are weak are useless and we are the least of the people and we're always f fault the blame is put on us and the bad thing happened and Isaiah said that your belongings will be taking by the Babylonians and his life was extended by 15 years but within three years from his healing Manasseh was born and uh, he grew up on a holiness environment and we grow up in in the church a safety and blessed environment but the question is what do i do what i'm thinking what i'm doing here we see manasseh he was trapped And he was the biggest sinner of all the kings. He did many bad things and he turned against the God by his acts. But God loves him and spoke to him and said, repent. But Manasseh managed to make Judah to sin to the Lord because he thought he could ruin the people and ask them to do what he wanted, what was his desire.
And uh, and uh, Manasseh was ransomed by the Assyrians, and everybody would think that he will die now. But what happened? Manasseh took the way of the blessing. Why? Because he cried out to the Lord with all his heart. He was humble and prayed to the Lord. And what will happen? Who knows? What happened with Ezekiel? What happened with Peter in the prison? What happened with the 185,000 soldiers of Assyria? What God will do? We don't know. But we know that He will do miracles to the ones who cry out to the Lord, being humble and ask from God, praying with faith, so God will act. And uh, he was set, set it free, and he became again a king. Is that possible? My brethren, nothing is impossible to God. And nothing is impossible to the believers. Do you believe that? Nothing is impossible to God. And nothing is impossible to the believers. And I always say when I preach or I pray, God, help me while I have little faith. So anything we ask in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, the God will do no what we ask for, but more and many things from our prayers and things that we cannot even imagine. He cleaned. Everything, Manasseh, so the God returned to him. He got rid of the foreign gods and removed the image from the temple of the Lord, as well as, as all the altars he had built on the temple hill and the Jerusalem, and he threw them out of the city. And he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed fellowship offerings. To whom? To Manasseh who was not an observator anymore, but he was an executor of the word of God, doing everything he was commanded. And he had a blessing pleasure because of his decision to follow again the God. for many years and what is the message of our Lord and the teaching of him don't think what you did think what the Lord can do and Not Manasseh only was saved, but all his family, all his nation, and anyone he had under his supervision. Why? Because he cried out to the Lord. He begged the Lord. He humbled himself 
blaming himself for what was happened as a result of his choices. And the God, with a miraculous way, changed everything. And my brethren, we have difficulties in our life, so our heart will be tested because of our mistakes, of our choices. There is the God's trial that it's for our training. It's also the devil's temptation, like Job. Because the problem he had should be revealed for his self-righteousness and he was cleaned. So when the trial came, he said, I'm useless person. I am nothing. And God said, now you will be again the blessed man of God. And Job received double blessing than what he had before this trial. And I, I don't know why the Lord allows a temptation for myself. But I know one thing. For the one who loves the God, there will be a good result. And no matter what problems you have, financial, family problems, you should know that God has a good plan for you that you may not understand but we should trust the Lord trust the Lord and say let your will be done nor the way I ask but the way you know Amen